Praise God, praise God. We're just going to wait a moment at least to have one person. I don't really advertise it as much at 9 a.m. on Saturdays, but uh, I know that people watch it later. So um, that is a wonderful thing. So we're going to we're going to break the scriptures, and, um, and as we break the scriptures, we're going to pray as well. Um, there is a lot of people to pray for. So uh, first, we're going to be talking about welcome to whoever is there. I can't see you from here. And um, so bless you, and we're going to open up in prayer and uh, take you from here. Darren, God bless you. Good to see you. Hope you stay with us. Anyway, um, let's pray, and um, there is a lot of uh, requests. Uh, Judy Gage, she's not feeling well today, and uh, so we're going to pray for her as well. And, um, and we have Madeline there. God bless you, Madeline. Um, so um, we're going to just pray it and uh, believe God for uh, a touch of God upon Judy's life. And as you know, Steve is, hasn't been feeling well. And uh, God bless you too, Darren. Uh, Steve has not been feeling well. He's um, gone to the hospital for a few days just to get better. Not COVID-19 or anything like that. It's just um, a situation in his life. Um, he's been taking uh, some medication and that, and it didn't go right. So um, he'll probably be with us next week. So uh, but keep him in prayer, and we're going to pray for him as well. And then many others that are sending us prayer requests from different churches, different provinces, and, uh, and even uh, outside of um, Canada. So uh, we're going to make sure that we lay hands on them, on the request, and pray for Judy as well. So join with me. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for Darren. I thank you for Madeline and for all those that will come and, and listen to this uh, segment of uh, the teaching of the Word and Prayer. I pray your blessing upon them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Reach out your hand to Darren, Madeline, and others, O oh God, in, in, in Jesus' name. Bless them, Father. And Lord, everyone that will come later, O oh God, and, uh, and, or is listening now, we pray your blessing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice. That's our choice, to rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, we commit this day into your hands, O oh God, and even the 11 o'clock service today. Oh, what a powerful word is coming forth this, this uh, morning, O oh God, uh, at 11 o'clock. So, God, bless the service, O oh God. Give us ears to hear and, and the anointing to, to deliver your word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, we pray for Steve, O oh God, Lord, one of our own, the sound man, uh, a great friend and a loving creature. He loves people. So, Father, we pray, God, your hand extended upon his life in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, touch him. Oh, God, at the hospital bed, oh, God, I pray, God, that you will touch him in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And, Lord, that he will get well and be with us this coming week, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, so he can get back to work and, and to do what he does best. So, God, in Jesus' name, cover him with your precious blood. Pour the oil of your spirit upon his life, O oh God, I pray it in Jesus' name. And comfort him through this time, my God. We pray for Judy, O oh God, as well, O oh God. And Father, he's coming here today. We pray your blessing upon him, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, for, for others, O oh God, that have sent their, their request to us. O oh God, we bless them. O oh God, we, we lay hands on those requests, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Daughters and sons and husbands and wives and children and people sick, O oh God. People in bondage, people lost without God. O oh Father, you know every request that comes to us, O oh God. We pray, God, to release of your power. Answer prayer, O oh God, as you did a few weeks ago with Christy. Lord, as she was nowhere to be found for six, seven days, and God... She's back, oh God, she was found in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, there is no distance with you. Lord, whether they're in another province, whether in another city, whether in another country, oh God, 
Meet the needs that are coming to us, O oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. We pray for hell in theirs, O oh God. Father, Lord, she's been, un uh, she's been sick for a while now. We pray your blessing upon her, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise her up, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Touch her, heal her, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Oh God, let, let people be made whole by the power of God. Let mental illness be, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let cancer go, arthritis go. Oh God, every physical situation, Father God, by your stripes we are healed. We were healed, oh God. And Father, we stand in the word of God this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So Father, I release your healing virtue, your healing power, Father, heal. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for physical, spiritual uh, healing, uh, uh, emotional healing, uh, financial healing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Lord, that through this time, this difficult time that the world is facing, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we will not fear, but Lord, that we will trust you, O oh God, that our eyes will be upon you this day, O oh God, and the days to come. We ask in Jesus holy and precious name we rebuke the forces of hell oh god and we ask the holy spirit to come now come for everyone that is listening oh god fill our places with your presence oh god give us divine wisdom oh god in jesus holy and precious name and have your way today oh god i'm working us both to do and to will of your own good pleasure we ask it in no other name but in jesus name amen and amen. So we're reading today um, uh, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to concentrate mostly in uh, 16 and 17. Uh, but before that, we'll read it from the beginning. And just to get a thought, uh, I think that a lot of verses here is one thought. Uh, and that is to make things right. So uh, I'll be reading from the Amplify. And, and the good news is this. I told many of you that I added another uh, Bible to my collection of studies. So I do have the King James, the um, New King James. I use the New King James as well. I use the Pure Word, which is a translation from the Greek to the English. I use the Amplified Bible, the King James, and now I have the New American Standard Bible. Uh, many people say that this is the closest to the, to, to the original. So anyway, I, and I have large prints, so now I can, <laughs> I can see it better. Amen. So, uh, but I'll be using uh, the Amplify today. This is my first day with the uh, NASB, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use that at home. But I thought that I'd come and, and show it off. It's a big one. You know, I can hit somebody with this. Anyway, so uh, anyway, let's read. So Proverbs chapter 6, I'll be reading from the verse 1. It says, my son, if you have become shorty, guaranteed a debt or obligation for your neighbor, if you have given your pledge for the debt of a stranger or another outside your family, if you have been snared with the word of your lips, if you have been trapped by the speech of your mouth, do this now. But let me explain there. I believe that, that the scripture here is telling us, you know, a lot of problems that we can... Uh, uh, encounter, you know, co-signing a loan for somebody else, uh, you know, put our name uh, uh, on some kind of agreement or contract for somebody else, you know. I always tell people, you know, <laughs> be careful, okay, you know, <laughs> be careful when you do that because he can come back and bite you uh, in the future. So, uh, and then, you know, he talks about, you know, if you have been a snare with the words of your lips, so that means that you make verbal promises or written promises, and now, you know, it has turned out to be a catastrophe. So let's see what the Word of God has to say. He says, do this now. He doesn't say tomorrow. He says, do this now, my son, and release yourself from the obligation. Since you have come into the hand of your neighbor, so that means that you have made a promise, maybe you're not keeping or, or something has happened, he says, you know, since you have come into the hand of your neighbor. So that means that now, now whoever signed, whoever did something, uh, you're, you're a snare to that person or to your neighbor. He says, go humble yourself and plead with your neighbor 
to pay his debt and release you. So that means that you probably co-sign for somebody. The person is not uh, coming across with uh, what he's promised or she's promised. So he says, go and, and plead with a person, humble yourself, plead with your neighbor to pay his, de his debt and release you with no sleep, with no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. So that means, you know, don't sleep until you do that. Make sure you fix accounts, you know. And then he says, tear yourself away from like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. You know, and, and then, you know, this is one chapter that I like about a couple of things, and I'll be doing that in verse 16. But in verse 6, it talks about ants. You know, he says, go to the ant. You know, let's learn something from the ant. A lazy one, <laughs> okay, a lazy one, and observe her ways and be wise. So, you know, he says, you know, learn something from the ants, you know. So uh, what do they do? which having no chief, they have no leader, okay, overseer or ruler, she prepares her food in the summer and brings in her provisions or food for the winter in the harvest. And it's so true, you know, we have to learn so much from them that, uh, you, know, um, that you know, they're lazy, but they're well organized together, you know, something that we can all learn as Christians, imagine if we all come together, just like the ants, you know, and work together and, and, and make sure we have enough of everything. You know, that reminds me to the book of Acts. You know, the, there was no need. You know, everybody brought their things to the basket and then they distributed according to the needs of the people. So everyone's needs were met. You know, and that is revival. That is a, that is a wonderful thing to do. So, you know, he says, learn you know, from, from the ants, okay? Observe her ways and be wise, which having not chief overseer ruler, she prepares her food in the summer and brings in the provisions for the winter in the harvest. He says, how long will you lie down, O lazy one? So he's calling whoever lazy, okay? When will you arise from your sleep? Oh, you know, that's a message and a half. You know, I believe that Christians, we need to wake up. You know, the countries, you know, we're going to hear a little bit about that at 11 o'clock today. I mean, the country is going crazy. You know, the world is going crazy. I mean, you know, the unthinkable is taking place. And now it's for the, for the church or churches or Christians to rise up and wake up. You know, we need to wake up. He says, when will you arise from your sleep and learn self-discipline? In brackets, it gives us a little understanding there. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to lie down and rest. You know, verse 11, listen to this. So your poverty will come like an approaching prowler who walks slowly but surely. And your need will come like an armed man making you helpless. So that means, you know, we, we need to wake up. We need to make things right. We need to make our accounts, you know, things that we ought, that we have things against other people or people have against us. You know, sometimes we need to apologize. We need to make things right, even if we're not the guilty party, you know, just to make amends and, and to live in peace, right? So, uh, and, um, and over here it says, so your poverty, will, you know, so your poverty will come like an approaching prowler who walks, who walks and your need will come uh, and your need like in arm men making you helpless in brackets there. So, you know, like, you know, I believe that a lot of, a lot of times because we don't fix our situations with our neighbors, you know, it could be your family member, it could be a friend, it could be somebody. So if we don't make amends with our, with our, uh, with our neighbor or our family member, or whoever it may be, then, you know, he says over here, so your poverty, poverty will come. And a lot of people that I believe that they're, they're crippled financially and crippled in every way, physically and emotional, is because we have, we have unforgiveness, we have resentment, we, have, we might have bitterness, we might have whatever in our hearts. So, uh, you know, we have to be careful, you know, because then, you know, we reap what we sow. So I encourage you in the name of Jesus, you know, to make things right with people. I mean, you know, you know, I, I, I meet people that they hold things uh, against somebody for years. 
you know, you're not causing that person any harm because that person is probably, you know, doing well. <laughs> but you're causing your sir, your, yourself harm. So it's good to release. And it talks about here, you know, release that situation. And if they're around you, you go and make peace. Go and, and, and plead and, and, and make amendments, you know, make, make, you know. And then it goes in verse 12. A worthless person, a wicked man, is one who walks with a perverse uh, mouth, uh, who winks with his eyes, we talked about last week, who winks with his eyes, who shuffles his feet. So that means a, a, a kind of a two-faced person, you know, a deceiver, you know. Uh, and, it, and it says a wicked man, a worthless man. So that means, you know, one that has not a good agenda, okay? And, uh, and then he says, um, who points with his finger, uh, who perversely in his heart plots trouble and evil continually. You know, so, you know, have you ever met somebody like that? You know, that they're always plotting evil, you know, plotting something bad, you know, and, and that's the way they are. So he says, you know, uh, verse 15, therefore... Uh, his disaster will come suddenly upon him. You know, again, we reap what we sow. You know, so that's, that's the reason that we need God. Uh, you know, perfect peace of them whose mind has stayed on thee. Uh, we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, there's so much benefits in being born again, meaning, you know, turning our life over to God. There's so much benefit that God can, can heal you maybe from the hurts of your past that causes you to be a wicked person, as the Bible says, you know. So, you know, we, we got to, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of people that are like that, they hate themselves. And, and, and what happens, the, the more they hate themselves, the, the bigger the hole is, the deeper the hole is. And, and, and that's the way they live and that's the way they die, you know. So, you know, uh, God has come to rescue us. You know, God is coming to, to deliver us from that kind of a life. You know, we were dead in, I mean, we were in sin. We were a slave to sin. And, you know, the devil did a lot of damage to us. But now is the time, you know, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to come to God, cry down to God, and say, God, save me from, from me. You know, a lot of times we got to do that. You know, save me from myself. That means, you know, like, uh, I'm a mess. You know, I, I, I'm not a good person. You know, so, uh, Lord, deliver me, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, and he will, but you got to surrender yourself. So number one, you got to make a turn, right? That's repentance. So you got to go from your ways to God's ways. And, and then you, and when we, when you do that, then God will break the powers of sin in, in, in your life. So that now you're not longer a slave to sin, a slave to the devil. You know, the Bible says that whoever we submit our members to, we become servants to. And before Christ, you know, when we don't have God, uh, you know, religion is not going to save you. So when we don't have God in our life. So what happens? You know, we're slave to sin. We're slave to the devil, right? We have no power over him. So, you know, we, we, we keep doing stupid things and we, and we dig in a deeper hole and the deeper hole and the deeper hole and we can't get out of that hole. Uh, and, and that's what I call the cycle of defeat. You know, we keep doing the same stupid thing over and over again. But Jesus came to set us free. You know, and that's the reason, you know, he, he wants you to have total surrender. Total surrender. Total, total, total surrender. You know, many are Christians. They go to church. They speak in tongues. They carry a Bible. They sing nice hymns and, and all of that. But they are not totally surrendered to God. So who are you cheating? I mean, the Bible clearly says, be not only hearers of the word, but be a doers of the word. And then the latter part is the most important one. It says deceiving your own selves. A lot of people, you know, it's not that the devil is doing it. You know, people are, are deceiving themselves because they're only hearers of the word. They pick and choose what they're going to obey and, and they reject those things that they don't want to obey. So what happens? You can't do that. You can't do that. It, you know, God is requiring a total surrender to him. You know, and, and we'll benefit for us, right? The more you give to God, the more he, the more he gives you unto you. So, you know, that we, we total surrender. And when we are born again, then we're no longer our own. We belong to him now. Our body becomes his because now he comes and dwells in us by his spirit and now he becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit. So now he begins to deal with our wickedness. He begins to deal with our lies. He begins to deal with this and that and that and that to make you a, uh, a better person. He's come to forgive over your sins, set you free, deliver you, translate you from darkness to the light, give you power over all the power of the devil, heal you in every way in the name of Jesus <laughs> and, and set you free. You know, the Bible says, you know, whoever the son sets free, he's free indeed. So, but we have to totally surrender to him our lives. Hallelujah. There is no other way. There is no other way. But let's read because I'm going to get to verse 16. That's what I, I want to expand a little bit because then we're talking about believers, okay? So over here it says, you know, um, therefore, verse 15 uh, his disaster will come suddenly upon him. Instantly he will be broken and there will be no healing or remedy because he has no heart for God. So, you know, there, there is a key right there. You know, I mean, we don't want to talk about this and say, oh, Brother John, how come you always have to be the bearer of this kind of news? And it's true, you know, that if we don't have a heart for God, right, that means that we will not love God. You know, we got to have a heart for God. We want to we want to crave for Him. We want to understand that He is the answer to all of our needs and everything like that. And and then when we understand God, then we know that we have to totally surrender to to Him, to love Him above all things. You know, all things, family members and everything. We got to love Him first. You know, uh, he wants you to love your family, but he wants you to put him first. Because when you put him first, then he becomes Lord of your life. He becomes the one that he's going to mold you and make you and break you and fill you after his will. And he's going to transform you. You see, when you invite God into your life and you turn away from your wicked ways and, and choose his ways, you know, he's not coming to destroy you. We are already destroyed. <laughs> we are already destroyed. You know, a lot of people are afraid to come to God because they got to change A, B, C, D, E, whatever. They got to change a few things in their lives. <laughs> but, you know, when I tell people, you know, <laughs> you know, look at, look at the mess that you're in. You're lost. You're heading to hell. You're not going to heaven. You know, I mean, the, the greatest gift that we can have is salvation. Salvation that gives us the, the, the ticket to go to heaven. You know, and, and then the life of Christ in us in order for us to live for Christ. You know, I mean, that's that. Why would anybody reject that? But many people are rejecting that today. Right. I don't understand that. You know, I always said, you know, I never, you know, it's like people, they like to be ripped off. Really? They like to be ripped off. So if you live a wishy-washy Christianity, uh, you, you're getting ripped off because you're not a doer. You're only here and you pick and choose what you want to, uh, what you want to obey and what you don't want to obey. You can't live like that. God does not, God does not dwell where there is sin and, 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 and a choice that we make to entertain different things in our life. He wants a holy life, you know, and the benefiter is you. You know, if you die today, you go to heaven, right? But if you die in your sin, you won't go to heaven, right? So, you know, sin separates you from God. That's the reason that we got to live totally surrendered to him. Okay. And now, you know, a word for Christians over here, because now, now he says, you know, these things, listen to this, verse 16, and this is where I'm going to close it up, and then maybe I'll pick it up next week. It says, this six things the Lord hates. The Lord hates. So verse 16, let's see what uh, my, my NASB says about verse 16. It says, there are six things which the Lord hates, okay? Yet seven, indeed seven, are repulsive to him. And then he starts listening them, listening them. He says a proud look, the attitude that makes one overestimate oneself and discount others. <laughs> That's a good interpretation. I'm just reading the brackets of the thought. That the, that the translators wrote over here. So he says, you know, one, a proud look, okay? One of the things that <laughs> he's better than everybody else, okay? And then the other one, a lion tongue, okay? We know that oh, no liars are going to enter into heaven. He says, and hands that shed innocent blood, okay? And then a heart that creates wicked plans. You know, there we go back to, to the worthless person, a wicked person. 
you know, wicked plans, you know, you know, how am I going to get, get to this person? I, you know, I, um, a dear lady told me this week, you know, he says, you know, how this lady, you know, she was sending notes and, and that, and, 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 and uh, she wouldn't know who it is until she caught that lady, you know, and she was full of hate, you know, uh, planning and, and harassing somebody else and stuff like that. It says, feet that run swiftly to evil. Okay, then verse 19, a false witness who breathes out lies, even half truth, and one who spreads this court rumors among brothers. So there, there, there is a things that we have to be careful about. You know, I mean, that's the reason that we need Christ. You know, we need God to transform our lives in order for us to be new creatures. The Bible says that to those that are in Christ Jesus, they are new creatures. The all has passed. Behold, the new has come. So that means, you know, let, you know, and the Bible clearly says, let go of the past, you know, and, and come to God. And when you come to God, then he'll heal you. He'll deliver you from these things and he'll make you a better person. But I see a lot of Christians that, that, that are in this, in this two verses right here, you know, and, and that means that it's a sign that they have not really totally surrendered to God, not totally surrendered to the Lord. So we have to make sure that we are totally surrendered to God so that way he can operate in us. And even though now we're free from sin, uh, we're, we're, not a long, we're not longer slave to sin, we're now we're slave to righteousness, right? Which is a good thing. So that means that now we belong to God. So now let God do the work in you. You know, because, you know, you know what you're doing wrong. You know if you're telling white lies, if you know, you know that if you're uh, planning wicked things, uh, stuff like that, uh, you, you know, and, and the proud look, you know, sometimes we don't see that. You know, that's called a blind spot, you know. So, but look at your actions, you know, uh, look at the way you speak, uh, you know, how many eyes are there, you know. You know, I did this, I did that, I did this, and I did this, and I did that, and I did yeah, That could be a sign of pride in your heart, right? You know, oh, you know, and, and, and then we feel that we're better than anybody else. You know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share today at 11, you know, that I'm in an awkward position because sometimes God tells me something that I have to release. And then, you know, I, I feel like, you know, people are going to think, you know, that I'm proud, cocky, that I'm better than them, and... And they don't understand, you know, I, I feel like Paul when he says, you know, I'm the worst sinner, you know. Uh, and I was talking to a friend of mine in Ontario uh, yesterday, I think. And, uh, and I said to him, I says, you know, you know, I have gone through hell and back. I have made so many mistakes in life, but God has restored me and, 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 and broken me. I mean, I'm a broken man. And, and, and as long as you see me, as long as I see you, God is still working in us. You know, and, and we desire not to be proud. You know, we desire not to lie. We desire to be righteous. We desire to be holy as he's holy. And that, so that's our choice. And as we choose that, then the Spirit of God can work in us. And, 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 and you know, Paul said, you know, I die daily. Paul said, I pick up the cross daily. You know, it's a daily thing. It's not a weekly thing, you know. It's a daily thing that we say, you know, okay, thank you, Lord, for today. You know, and, uh, and as you wake up, oh, I always tell people, you know, your morning does not begin uh, in the morning when you wake up. Your morning begins how you went to sleep the night before. So settle your accounts in your mind. Uh, you know exactly what you're going to probably do uh, tomorrow. So prepare yourself for that. Pray through a prayer at, uh, at your tomorrows. And, and then, you know, pray for the unexpected things that will come up, that you will not be reactive, but you will be proactive. So what happens, you know, then you say, okay, Lord, I got to do A, B, and C, and D, and this and that. And, uh, and Lord, I know that there may, may be things that I don't know that are going to happen tomorrow. So I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will give me the grace and the peace and the wisdom to be able to be proactive rather than being reactive. You know, reactive gets us into a lot of problems, right? So, you know, you got to prepare yourself. So when you wake up, you know, and, and try this, you know, it's like you wake up better. 
You know, your mind starts going and you're already prepared that you got to go to the laundry, man. You got to go here. You got to go to work. You got to call the doctor. You got to you gotta call a friend, you know, somebody's calling. So you're preparing yourself for the day, but you already prepare yourself the night before. So when you wake up, you're ready, right? But you're already, you're ready for the unexpected, you know? The alarm clock was supposed to sound at 7 a.m. <laughs> and you forgot to turn it on. So it was 7.15 and you lost 15 minutes before you go to work. So that's the unexpected. How you gonna, how you gonna react to that? Wow, it's 7.15, you know, I slept in, you know, and then you relax and say, Lord, you knew this, now help me to uh, speed up a little bit, you know, and if you're gonna be late for work, or if you're gonna be late for something, call that person and says, you know what, tell them the truth. You know, he says, you know what? I put my alarm clock for seven o'clock and, and, and I forgot to turn it on. So, but I'm on my way. I'm going to speed up things and I'll probably be at the same time, whatever. But, you know, be proactive. Think about the situation that you're facing and that. So anyway, so six things the Lord hates and we got to pay attention to this. Okay. There is one judge in this world and that is God. You know, either we're going to live eternity with him or eternity without him. You know, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So we got to pay attention to what he doesn't like, right? You know, so if he doesn't like something, then we got to make sure that, that, that we, we pay attention to that. So I said, there are six things the Lord hates, indeed seven, that are repulsive. That means that they're terrible, you know, repulsive to him. That means that it really, you know, bothers him, you know. So, you know, we got to pay attention. If you want to please God, which I believe that every, every believer, you know, you want to please the Lord, it says a proud look. So, you know, let, let's deal with that. I mean, you know, uh, many years ago, God told me, you know, number one enemy in your life is going to be pride. So you have to be careful with pride. That's the reason that the Bible says, humble yourself before the Lord. He doesn't say, Lord, humble me. You don't want God to humble you because when God, I'm, I'm losing the connection a little bit, but anyways, come back here right now. So, you know, you, you got to be careful with that. So, you know, humble yourself before the Lord. Humble your, come to the Lord and say, God, here I am. I'm humbling myself before you. So, you know, touch me, heal me, deliver me, uh, you know, and watch your pride, watch your arrogance, watch your, you know, uh, what you say, you know, you know, the, you know, that's why the Bible says, you know, examine yourself. So that means that when we examine ourselves, then we say, you know, let's see how many eyes did I say when I, when I speak? And uh, am, am I, do I sound like I'm better than somebody else or whatever? You know, I record all of my teachings. And the reason I do that, I go and listen to them. Not because I love myself. Well, I do. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, so I listen to my messages. Why? To correct myself if I say something wrong, right? And then I will come next time. I said, you know what? I said this and this and that. Or somebody might say, you know, you said, I remember once, you know, a fellow said to me, he said, oh, you said, you, you said I, I, I. And I said, I will never say I, I will say we. And then, uh, oh, he was sure that it was I. So I went up to that recording and, <laughs> and I called him and I said, brother, I said, I'll, I'll send you the, the teaching. And I says, I never said I, I say we, you know, so... <laughs> Anyway, but thank God that somebody, you know, is watching and listening, right? So anyway, so uh, let's go to the next one. And hands that shed innocent blood, you know. Th these are troublemakers, you know, and you see them a lot in, in churches today. So-called Christians, you know, troublemakers, gossipers, and all of that. Uh, a heart that creates wicked plans. We talked about that. You know, you need to be delivered from that. There has to be a root to that. Maybe, you know, something happened in your past, go and fix that. Because then, you know, you have to understand that sin will blind you. Uh, but it will not blind the person that is watching you. You know, uh, you know, a blind spot is a spot that you cannot see. But those around you can see. <laughs> you have to understand, people around you can see your blind spot. You know, so don't, don't be a fool in a sense. You know, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be deceived. You know, so because people around you, you know, they can hear the way you speak and, and what you do and that, or they might hear that you're the one that did something wrong, right? So be careful that your sin will not come out, right? And then uh, a false witness who breathe out lies, even half truth. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people, when they say, oh, you know, that's a white lie, you know, it's not bad. 
you know, tell the truth and just take your chance because, you know, in the past probably we lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. So we were lying. Why? Because we, we were serving without knowing the father of lies, the devil himself, right? So now we, if we are born again, if we are born again, if we have totally surrendered our lives to him and repent from our wicked ways and from the lies and the sins of the past, so now God wants you to start trusting him and start telling the truth, right? E e even if the truth is not too exciting, right? So, uh, uh, you know, but, you know, we have to be careful with that because then we create a different personality, you know, a mask, you know, a mask. You know, some, some people, they have different personalities. Why? Because they, they begin to create this personality that, that is not them. But when they go home and they, and they face themselves, they see themselves. And sometimes they hate themselves. So that's the reason that they have to create a, a new personality. You know, so they go there and pretend that everything is fine and fine and fine when they're hurting, when they're dying, when they're lost, when, they're, when they're, they have thoughts of suicide and stuff like that. You know, I had a lady call me uh, or text me last night. You know, she's down and that. She'd probably be here 11 o'clock. And Father, I pray for that lady right now in Jesus' name. I won't mention her name. But Father God, I rebuke the spirits of suicide out of her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So, you know, we have to be careful. We got, we got to choose holiness. We got to choose righteousness. We got to choose something that we never had before we, we, we became a Christian. You know, I mean, uh, what, a, what a joy. I remember when I first became a Christian, you know, I was so dirty in the world. I was so dirty in my past that I used to go to this Christian ministry, uh, Hanley Street. Uh, I, I lived only uh, two, three blocks away from them. So I went there and I would walk around the building, you know, <laughs> forever, you know, and saying hi to people and that. Why? Because I felt something different. I felt uh, warmth. I felt love that was coming from them. And then, you know, one day, you know, this tall man, you know, stopped me and he said, hi, young man. And he said, hi to me. And that was David Maines, you know, <laughs> the big David Maines of Canada. He stopped and, and, you know, I told him that I'm new uh, to, to, the, to the kingdom. And, uh, you know, he took time and he prayed for me and, and blessed me. So, you know, and, 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 you know, why? Why was I walking in the, in the building? Why would I hang around the building all the time? Why? Because, you know, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was bound, but now I am free. I was in sin, but now I have a new life of righteousness. So, you know, you have to, you know, taste that the Lord is good. You got to taste it. And when you taste it, stay there. Don't go and contaminate yourself with sin. With stupid sins, you know, all of these the things that God hates, they're stupid sins. You know, what are you proud about? What are you proud about? You were going to hell and you didn't have the ticket to go to heaven. God gave it to you. So there is no reason for us to, to be proud. You know, then lying tongues and uh, 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 hands that shed innocent blood, uh, one that creates wicked plans and... Uh, and feet that run swiftly to evil, you know, that's all they do is create this thing. And you find a lot of these people in churches. You know, I said, oh, how, they're, they're, they're not really true Christians. Listen, we have to understand that churches are not a, a holy place. Churches, if they, if they invite the Holy Spirit, if they serve God, then a holy God will be there. A holy God will be there. But the people are sick. We're all sick. So I call the churches a spiritual hospital. So don't look at churches as a perfect place. You know, somebody say, you know, uh, somebody says, you know, oh, I don't go to church because there is too many hypocrites in the in the churches. <laughs> and the guy says, you know, well, I'd rather spend uh, um, uh, in churches with a few hypocrites than I spend eternity with all of them. Meaning, you know, I'd rather put up with the Christians here in the, on earth, you know, and understand that, you know, that church is not a... Uh, a holy place, a church that serves God has a holy God in there, but uh, people are sick. People are sinners. People, there is not righteous, not no one. People need deliverance. People need healing. People need this. People need that. So it's a spiritual hospital, right? And when he says, you know, I'd rather spend, uh, you know, with them here in church with a few hypocrites, he was right. Then I spend eternity with all of them. That means eternity in hell with all of them that chose to be away from the Lord. So anyway, so let's, let's finish over here. It says here, uh, uh, a false witness who breathes out lies, a troublemaker, 
and one who spreads discord among the brethren. So this is a big one right here. You know, gossipers, you know, oh, do you hear this? You know, and I tell people, you know, we got we to gotta fight to keep unity among us. You know, we, we got to fight that because when there is unity, look at the, uh, the book of Acts. When there's unity, that's when the Holy Spirit fell. That's when the power of God came and, and things began to take place. So we got to fight for unity. But your tongue. Cast the devils out of your out of your lips. You know, you know that's that's what that's what Isaiah said. A man of God, imagine a prophet, a, a mighty man of God. He's you know when he saw the glory of God, he says, "My lips." He says, "I'm undone." You know, I'm a mess, and my lips are unclean. And I saw the people around me that their lips are unclean as well. So you know, when we see the holiness of God, we see the garbage in us. That's the reason you know you gotta press into the Lord. Let the light of God shine in your life so that way you're able to see all the gook in your life and give it up and give it up. Oh, you know, he says, oh, Lord, <laughs> that's dirty. You know, I don't want this and I don't want that and I don't want this and I don't want that. Clean up the house, right? Clean up, clean up, clean up. That's the, that's the reason that we got to do. Clean up till Jesus comes. Don't entertain that. You know, some people, they just love to gossip. You know, they, they love, you know, people come to me and say, oh, so-and-so is talking about you and so-and-so. And I feel terrible for them because they're hearing truth, whether it be in person or, or over uh, on social media, and they choose to gossip. They choose to talk about people, you know, and, and I feel bad for that, you know. And then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this thought. You know, a lot of people, they hang around people. Listen to this. And I share this many times, but I'll share it again as it comes to my mind. You know, I, 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 I was part of a big church and then, you know, I was walking in a big church. There was probably a couple thousand people there and, and, and I saw groups, you know, one group here, one group there. And, uh, and, uh, and I saw all the troublemakers, you know, uh, hanging around together. And I, and I say, Lord, he says, how come all the troublemakers hang around together? And how comes all those that are turned on for God, they hang around together and all of that? So, you know, and, and very uh, softly, the, the Spirit of God has spoke to me. And it makes so much sense. It says, John, the reason that they hang around together, the reason that they talk to each other, the reason that they call themselves during the week all the time is because they're feeding from the same Spirit. So if, they're, if, they, if they have the Spirit of gossip, guess what? It's going to attract other gossipers. You know, and you have to be careful. You know, and, and one day I'm going to talk about transferring of spirits. So that means that if I come to you with a gossip, okay, with a gossip to you, and you receive it, then you become a gossiper. That spirit is transferring to you. You know, and then you become a gossiper. Then you become blind in that area. Then you start talking about people and talking about this and talking about that. If you have a beef with anybody, go to the person. If you have a beef with me, come to me rather than blah, 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 talking out there. Because when you're talking out there without talking to the person, then what happens, you are entertaining an evil spirit that God hates. And God hates that. The Bible says here <laughs> in Proverbs 6, he hates that. One that causes discord among the brethren, a gossiper, one that, you know, that, 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 that breaks unity. You know, so what, we sh what should we do? What you should do is this. If when somebody comes to you with a gossip, rebuke them. I said, you know what? If you're going to talk about Mike or Mary, go to them. Or here, if they're in the same room, take them. Here, grab them by the hand and say, let's go and talk to the person that you're talking about. And they go from, you, you're going to see that they're going to pull back. And that they won't want to because the spirit will not allow them to do that. But that's, a, that's the right thing. Do not entertain Gossip. Don't entertain somebody that is a troublemaker. Don't entertain people that are evil within the churches. Don't. Because what happens when you accept it, when you accept it, then you become part of that. And then that, that's called transferring of spirits. That you become a gossiper. So hang around those that are sold out to God. Hang around those that are crazy for Jesus. Because then they can transfer something wonderful to you. And that is they're going to turn you on for God. They're going to speak truth into your life. And you're going to be set free. And you're going to be able to, uh, to live happily. So, you know, hang around people that you, that you know that they're more spiritual than you are. No gossipers and troublemakers, you know. And then another time, maybe I should teach, you know, on, on, on Saturday mornings, 
uh, about, about when to cut off a brother, when to cut off a, a sister, you know, that is not living right uh, before the Lord. So what happens, sometimes we got to cut people off. I said, you know what, I don't want to talk to you. You're too negative. You're a gossiper. You, do the, you need to repent, you know, and I don't want to hear your nonsense. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 yeah, but, but, but. I've been here in the church. I've been, well, turn to God. Get, let God heal you rather than, you know, throwing poison wherever you go. And, and you're always looking for somebody to hear you, hear you complain, heal you. You know, you know God hates that. Why? Because that's an operation of an evil spirit in a person's life. You know, that means that we have surrendered our members to that. And the Bible says when we surrender our members to that, then we become servants to that. Then you become a gossiper and you become blind, right? You don't think that you're gossiping, but you are. And, and you, you, you think that you're righteous and you're not. That's the, re that's the reason that the Bible says there is a way that seems right and to man. But the end thereof is death. That means that people entertain different spirits, seducing spirit, spirits that will try to, to uh, destroy unity among the brethren, right? Because the, the devil knows that if there is unity, then that's when God pours the oil, pours the Holy Spirit, and he commands his blessing upon that people. So, you know, the, 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 the devil doesn't want unity. So what happens, you know, he gets people, he's looking for an open door, You know, and that's the reason, you know, that I tell people, and I'm learning now, you know, that when God is moving, which I believe God is moving in our midst over here, when God is moving, we got to be careful that the devil will send somebody here, you know, or somebody, or the devil will, will get somebody in our, in our midst that, that will open up the door for the devil to start gossiping or causing the score and all of these things and that, you know, and pride goes before a fall. You know, so pay attention to these sins. You know, go and, and read the scriptures in uh, six, uh, Proverbs chapter 6, uh, verses 16 on for those two verses. And, you know, go through every uh, commentary and all of that and say, oh, God, deal with me. I don't want to displease you. I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to do something that you hate, that you, that you, that you're, 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 uh, you hate it. Oh, God, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt you. You did so much for me that I want to please you. I want, I want to obey you. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice, you know. God wants you to obey. Don't entertain those things because, you know, and then what happens, we go around churches and we pass on the spirits to everybody. Everybody that listens to gossipers become a gossiper because that spirit is transferred. And it's not going to say, oh, hoopy doo, here I am. No, he doesn't say that. He sneaks in and doesn't say a thing for a few days and then boom. He starts operating, operating, operating. Then you become blind because you accepted that. Instead of that, rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. And say, I'm sorry, I am a righteous person. I serve a holy God. If you have a problem with anybody, go to them. Go to them. And let me call them right now. You, you know, I, I, I'm going to help you. Let me call that person right now that you're gossiping about. And, and let's talk about that. And, 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 and confront that. Oh, no, 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 don't call them now. I'll, I'll, I'll call them. I say, okay, you call them and I'm going to follow up that you did talk. Because when I talk to that person, I'm going to tell them that you need to talk to, the, to, to him or to her and all of that. Oh, my God. How many know that that devil is going to have a hard time gossiping around you? Amen? So that person will not talk to you anymore. <laughs> It will not come around you anymore. Why? Because you're feeding from a different spirit. Oh, my God. Anyway, I hope that we got something out of this. I'm going to, it's uh, 10 to 10, so I'm going to just close it up in prayer. Thank you for joining me. Next week, I'll see if I, if I finish this chapter here. We'll see what meat, kind of meat is there. And, uh, and we'll release it next, next Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, for those that are in the city, come at 11. I tell you, I'm releasing. is a double barrel today in one message. And uh, something has been going through my mind for a while about some stupid nonsense that has hit a lot of Christian denominations and a lot of Christians here in Canada. And I've been quiet. I have not made no comment about this, but I will this morning as I've been inspired by the Spirit of God to release something today as I'm talking about the parables of Jesus. So, you know, I, I, and, and, and I tell you, when the Spirit of God spoke to me on Thursday at 9.42 and gave me this scripture, I said, that's not a parable. That's not a parable. And then, man, the information has started coming. And when I read that, that chapter, I mean, those scriptures, I tell you, it was a parable. 
And nobody, I don't think that nobody ever preached on the scriptures that I'm going to share 11 o'clock today as a parable. But it is a parable. <laughs> but then we're going to talk about the problem and the solution to what Canada is facing today. And I tell you, I'm going to make so many enemies today at 11 o'clock. And it's about time that somebody speaks the word of God as it is and somebody exposes. Because I see big denominations and large groups of people defying things here in Canada as Christians. And we're ruining our reputation and we're going to make it hard for whatever decision will be made for the churches today. So keep me in prayer. And if you're around, come. And, uh, and it won't be live, but I, I'll place it on Facebook tomorrow at 1030 in the morning. Halifax time. So I hope you can hope you can join us here live in person or tomorrow at 1030. So Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of the word because your word will go forth and accomplish that which you desire. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, bless the hearers. Oh God, I pray. Convict us of our ways. Convict us of our sin. Oh God, and if we have entertained wrong spirit, I pray God that we will renounce them in the name of Jesus, that we will come to the cross and say, God, forgive me for causing this core. Forgive me for, for entertaining and, and making wicked plans and that and lying and, 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 a pr and pride and all of that. Lord, I'm going to examine myself and I say, forgive me and deliver me from any, any seducing spirit in the name of Jesus Christ that will cost me to cause this core among the brethren. Oh God, that's not one thing that I want to do because when we cause this court among the brethren, we're hitting the ministry of God, the, 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 the life of God. So we're not coming against a person. We're not coming against a group. We're coming against the work of God. And Father God, deliver us, oh God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke all the forces of hell that will come against us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Deliver us. Oh God, from a proud look, let us humble ourselves before you, oh God, to cleanse our hands, oh God, and submit ourselves to you and resist the devil in the name of Jesus Christ away from our lives. So Father, heal, touch, oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God, and bless them, Father God, strengthen them, heal people physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, oh God, financially, in every way, and meet all of their needs according to your riches and glory, we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Pass this program to somebody else that needs it. I mean, we all need to hear the word of God. And I tell you, and if you're around at 11 o'clock, we're going to have revival here. God is going to move because the spirit of God has spoken. Uh, Thursday night at 942, I never forget. God whispered something in my ears. And that's what I'm going to release here today in Jesus' name. So may the Lord bless you. And keep you. And uh, tomorrow at 1030 we'll have that. And then Wednesdays we're doing singles. So if you're a single or a, or a married couple that wants to help singles. I mean uh, I already did three programs. And that is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Live here on Facebook. Uh, Revival Hour. And that is uh, part four this coming. And that is we did last week uh, finding the right man. And now it's finding the right woman. So God bless you. Uh, this is Brother John from Revival Hour, and I'm fighting for you. Bye for now. There we go.